Sorry about that. There are copyright issues about playing things longer than 30 seconds. So. <laughs> All right. Let's not forget it this time. Okay, to note that in the morning. Woo! <laughs> really intimate show today. Um, it should be a small crowd. We're yeah. looking forward to entertaining all of you guys for the next four hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Welcome to uh, episode nine. Swimming in that dirty water. <laughs> we know you've all been doing it. We have a great show for you today. Uh, for the first segment, we have our non-daily WordPress news show. Uh, second, we have our special guest, Mel Choice. <laughs> and we have an informational piece about shiny updates today. Very excited. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, who the hell are you? Uh, my name is Michael Kane. I am a, a jacked deltoid at Automatic. Uh, <laughs> it's about to be, I guess. I think we forgot to change that placeholder. I'm on the Delta team at Automatic. It's not a placeholder. <laughs> uh, I'm on the Delta team at Automatic, which is in charge of new user retention and uh, sign up. And uh, I tweet at Michael D. Kane somewhat seldomly, and I blog somewhat frequently at mapandmenu.com. You should all check it out. Pretty pictures. <laughs> Thank you. And I think you're, you're the one writing, right? Uh, I'm the one writing. <laughs> That's why the pictures are pretty, is what you're saying. <laughs> I guess. You make some pictures stand out for I get your I get your humor. We've been doing this a little too long. <laughs> Obenland, tell us about yourself. Yeah, my name is Constantine Obenland. Um, I also work at Automatic. I'm on a team called Web Mobile currently, um, and we work on everything uh, WordPress core and WordPress.org related. Is that a placeholder uh, title? Or no, this is my actual title uh, <laughs> that I gave myself. <laughs> As all automaticians do. As you all do, yeah. Um, you can find me on the web under at Openland on Twitter, GitHub, pretty much. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. I think you forgot something on your. On your... There we go. Uh, okay. I have that sunglasses. Uh, anyway, yeah, and uh, I also have a blog uh, on constantine.openland.it, also pretty pictures. Uh, not quite as pretty as Map the Menu. No, well, I'm not a professional photographer, so <laughs> as like quite is. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Oh, okay. All right, ready for the first segment? Should we just yeah. dive in? I'm excited about today's show. Me too. Three quick segments, and uh, yeah. first up. <laughs> Uh, thank you for joining us here for the WordPress scene. Um, do you want to go? Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us here for the WordPress Not Daily News Update, where we will cover some of the latest and not so latest bits of WordPress news from all around the community. First up, at the top of the hour, we'd like to remind our viewers that WordPress 4.6 is currently in its fourth beta, with an expected release candidate next Wednesday and a ship date of August 16th. Uh, this developer-heavy release includes a number of updates under the hood and a few user-facing features like a link checker that validates your pasted links in the editor, uh, a new admin experience that replaces Open Sans with your system's native fonts for a more app-like feel, and uh, the newest shiny updates feature that we'll be talking about a little later this hour. With all the work that's being done in development, there's never been a better time than now to help out with Core. Actually, there has been. <laughs> Become a tester, create some issues, maybe submit a patch, or join us later today uh, for Contributor Day, and one day you too can be as famous as my WordPress co-host here. Oh, shucks. <laughs> if you've been play paying close attention uh, in recent months, you may have noticed some changes happening on the WordPress plugin repository. Uh, the directory has, seen, has been re rewritten from the ground up uh, by yours truly, no less. Aiming to enhance the user experience, to be built on top of WordPress, I know, uh, pretty surprising, right? Um, to open source the directory and its API, to improve plugin searching, and to make the plugin re review process more scalable. Uh, the current prototype is in an open beta period for uh, user and developer test testing. You can find it on WordPress.org slash plugins dash WP. Uh, and it will also be continued to iterate on, uh, upon um, both on the front end and back end, including a new React-based JavaScript client. Um, take a look at the new pages and let us know what you think. Awesome. 
So uh, our final segment today is in the news hour will be uh, WordCamp EU 2016. Uh, how many of you guys attended WordCamp EU? Oh, surprising. Nice. nice. Uh, WordCamp EU was last month in very, very sunny Vienna. It was hot. <laughs> Over 2,200 WordPress enthusiasts from all over the world attended the three-day camp. Highlights included a Q&A from Matt and a piano solo from Helen Musandi. Um, to offer more coverage of the event, we sent our senior WordCamp correspondent and BuddyPress senior developer, John James Jacoby, halfway around the world to get the latest scoop. We thought it was a little strange that he needed an additional month on the show to dine, but anything for the story. John, John, can you hear us? John, turn your on. John, you're live. Anytime. Hey guys, John here. Thanks, John. I've got to tell you, Vienna is a gorgeous city. I'm, uh, I'm just really appreciative for this paid vacate. Uh, I mean, the chance to cover this event. <laughs> there were tons of fantastic speakers and interesting topics, and the European community is just so incredibly vibrant and friendly, you wouldn't believe it. That's fantastic. John, who did you have a chance to interview while you were there? Oh, so uh, while I was here, I had the chance to sit down with a few key WordPress contributors who had nothing but great things to say uh, about the event. Uh, first, I hung out with uh, Helen Busandi for a little while, and, uh, and she said, the official video for my hashtag WCEU talk is on at WordPress TV now. But my favorite part, is actually at Simon D's intro, smiley emoji. She, she said that to you in person? Oh yeah, she did. She's such a nice person. She wasn't the only one I talked to, though. Uh, Brian Cogsgaard was very excited about his trip and said, saw the site, walked in the rain, ate fish and chips at the Sherlock Holmes, saw an EU Remain protest in Trafalgar Square, Tourism checkmark emoji. That's not the enemy. I even sat down with Constantine Oberlin, and he said, wow, at T-Mobile really actually removed the 2G throttle on my internet data as promised in their summer travel promotion. I hope winter is not coming. John, I, I didn't see you at the event. And that was some random tweet of mine from after the workout. I've got to ask you, did you even go to the event? It sounds like you're just reading a bunch of tweets. <laughs> what are we paying for? You know what, fine guys, you caught me. I came to Europe with every intention going to and reporting on WordCamp, but I woke up the morning of the event and, you know me, Shawshank Redemption was on. <laughs> Who can resist the kind of robbery between two compassionate, handsome men trying to survive together in this bleak and lonely world of ours? It kind of reminded me of you two in a way, don't you think? Yeah, we can't argue that Shawshank's a pretty great movie, uh, and that, you know, I am a young Morgan Freeman, well, this is a taller Tim Robbins, but so we're not making you watch movies in hotel rooms in foreign countries. Uh, is the movie even in English? You know, I don't think that the theme needs any translation, guys. I do think that our, uh, our signal is breaking up, though. So, uh, clearly, I think that means that, uh, that I have to go. So, uh, thanks again for, uh, for, yes, this mug. It's the worst correspondent ever. Who hired him? I hate this job. I hope that, uh, John, I hope that gig at the post status works out, because we're just going to take more of this. John, we can hear you. John, you're still on. John, stop using my credit card. Well, fine. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> well, that's all we have for today's WordPress Not Daily News Update. Uh, please tune in next time, and until then, keep blogging, Boston. <laughs> yeah, don't go anywhere. We have uh, two more <laughs> segments. <laughs> please don't. Uh, first up, special guest, Mel Choice. And we also have uh, the Shiny Updates, uh, which we're going to be talking about um, fairly soon. But first, you know, I think we should, we should go to our... Uh, other lab correspondent for a traffic update. Traffic update, yes. Uh, Brian Krogsgaard, have you had a chance to check out the tra traffic here in Boston? Uh, yeah, as a Boston resident, I can tell you that all lights are Red Sox red, and traffic is at a standstill. 
uh, I was on Patriots Boulevard, and I was going nowhere whatsoever. So uh, y'all have a wonderful transportation system here in Boston, and I enjoyed all three hours on it this morning. Uh, so thank you for your uh, welcoming hospitality, and I look forward to being here in another decade to get the new track. Did, did you make those streets up? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, our next segment is always one of our favorite, some of the most redeeming for the show. But before we start that, okay, in an old man in the morning, and we're back. This is our uh, commercial break. Sorry, I totally missed that, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, next up, we'd like to welcome our very special guest interview, uh, Mel Choice. She is spontaneous, pixel perfect, and just a little bit cocky. That's taken directly from her website. We're not that mean. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Mel is, uh, in, in the spirit of great titles from Automatic, her official job title is, I'm a designer, not just a pixel pusher. Move it one pixel to the right. <laughs> I, I, she, she had me do that a couple of times already. Yeah, I think she said we do that too. Yeah, she uh, tweets at Mel Choice and uh, blogs and has her portfolio at Choice Design. So give her a warm round of applause to our special guest interview, Mel. Woo! You brought your one drink. We have a mug for you. Uh, I have one in each hand. <laughs> My hands are so full right now. Oh, thank you. Uh, am I starting or are you starting? I think some of that water spilled in the sea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to start. Then. Okay, go for it. Um, Mel, thank you for, uh, for joining us, for first of all. Me. Thanks for having me. I don't know how to answer your microphone. We've got to take care of this one. Drink from your mug. I'm a germaphobe, not yeah. a chase <laughs> All right, um, so uh, Mel, what do you do, and from where do you do it? Uh, so I'm a designer. Uh, I do mostly product-y stuff right now. Um, I'm a gravity team. We're friends with the Delta team. <laughs> uh, and I do it from uh, Work Bar Cambridge uh, in Central Square, or my apartment. Uh, of which I will not give you the address on Work TV. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I would have asked. <laughs> but you're, you're from Boston. Where's your accent? So, I'm not really from Boston as much as I live in Boston. Yeah. Uh, Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, we're always, we always love a good origin story. Okay. Um, so how did you first get into uh, design? Let's start there. So design, uh, I've always been like an art kid. Uh, and then my, let's say, when I started college, um, I did a bunch of stuff in uh, the like tech sphere of things. I worked for our like AV department. Uh, and I had a lot of opportunities to do projects. Uh, also as a kid, I did a lot of um, like web design. Um, really bad web design with tables and stuff, it was great. So I, had, I actually had a fan site uh, for the show Reboot uh, when I was in like middle school. <laughs> yeah, oh, we got some fans on here, it's great. Yeah, uh, so that's, that's kind of how I started. But then uh, in college I had the opportunity to uh, do some web stuff for work. And I was like, hey, I can maybe do this for work like forever. Awesome. Uh, uh, one of my favorite things to ask every designer is, for a little bit of gossip, uh, what's your worst client story? I have a lot of these. Uh, we got so, of time. Yeah. So I think the one that stands out the most uh, was before Automatic. I worked. Uh, I did a three-month apprenticeship at this uh, place, Fresh Love Soil in Watertown, and so uh, we were uh, negotiating a project with a new client, and they were like. Well, okay, we'll do this project with you as long as you give us one of your apprentices afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, like our, our program lead was like, we can't give you an apprentice. It's like they're people. <laughs> like this is a job. <laughs> we can't, like we can't just like sell you one of them after. So anyway, we, we didn't take that project. I think that's one of the best ones we had. 
so far. <laughs> So uh, Kane is a big fan of your blog, and he uh, he uh, recommended I, I should take a look. And so um, I, I loved your most recent board, the post about your um, uh, portfolio tips uh, for other designers. Um, it's worth a read for everyone that has a portfolio site, by the way. Um, in a related vein, do you have any tips for designers in the craft in the crowd um, that might be hoping to level up their skills? Yeah, so I find that every time I work with designers who are better than me, I tend to also get a lot better. Um, so I would advise, uh, if you're a freelancer, find some mentors or uh, other designers to collaborate with, get involved in open source. Uh, if you're like a new designer, I would recommend uh, working somewhere uh, where there is some sort of mentorship in place. Uh, just because that's the times when I've had uh, like designers helping me that are like way more experienced at the times that I feel like I've really gotten a lot better. Within Automatic, do we have these kinds of relationships within the design group? Oh my god, we have so many good designers with Automatic. It's super informal. Um, we For a little while, we were trying out like a mentorship program that was just like, hey, you're a new automatician, talk to me like if you're feeling like lost or uncomfortable. Uh, it's kind of faltered since we uh, lost our creative director. Um, but a lot of that happens organically. Like There, there is a lot of uh, collaboration, a lot of feedback that we do as a group. Uh, even though all of us are mostly on separate teams. Um, so the designers I know, uh, they generally tend to be pretty opinionated. Uh, and have worked with you pretty closely. So uh, when it comes to good versus <laughs> when it comes to good versus bad design, um, with that in mind, what's your biggest design pet peeve? Uh <laughs> So if we're getting like super like into like pet peeves, small things, uh, line height is a big one. So like the space between the lines of the text. Uh, in a lot of cases, when people are doing websites, they don't necessarily uh, reset the browser default, which is like one times the size of the font, and that's super tight. Uh, so whenever I get my TikTok, I like to specify like you want to make your body font like 1.3 to 1.6 times the size of your font size, which is very technical. Sorry. Also, okay, when you have a like tinted background and a border, but then like the shadow behind that object is like pure black, or like from like black instead of tinted, whatever color your background is. <laughs> I feel like I feel a rant coming. <laughs> I, I, you should stop me before I get started. <laughs> yeah, you're like really ramping up. Um, so with design critiques in mind, I've got a great question for you. Uh, what do you think about the Canon Open logo? It's some of my best work. <laughs> Oh, geez. Well, you know, it's not that bad, uh, but I think that maybe, you know, the head on the left is a little too big. That's, that's my head. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's a little bit better. Uh, how about just a little bit, a little bit more? <laughs> maybe, maybe like a, there we go. Yeah, that's a perfect logo right there. I'm getting good at this. Oh, man. Uh, so let's, let's bring it back to serious stuff here. Uh, you're you're a big deal in the WordPress core community, uh, very yes. much so. Fact, that's why you're you're up here today. I don't know why. <laughs> you're one of very few designers with commit access to core. Um, how did you get started with WordPress, and how did you end up with commit access? Yeah, I, so I have no idea how I ended up with commit access. I still think that's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, many, how many commits have you, have you made so far? Oh, maybe like three. <laughs> I think maybe two. Uh, I was forced to commit something uh, the weekend that I was going to commit at WordCamp US. They told me I was not allowed to leave until I committed something. Uh, so that's where number one happened. Uh, but I actually got involved at WordCamps. Uh, I went to WordCamp New York City, I think in 2010. Uh, I got really inspired by the community. Uh, started like looking into getting involved. Uh, for a while, I just followed along. Uh, slowly, as I got more comfortable, I started participating and then participating. Yeah participating more, uh, and then I found that like the more you show up, the like the more you end up doing, and so that's kind of like what I did. I just like didn't leave. I just kept showing up. <laughs> that's how I got committed. Are there other designers uh, who have committed? Michael does. Michael R. said. Um, might be. I think technically Matt McLeod. Helen's not a designer. Uh, I think technically Magnetic has come in. <laughs> uh, 
Well, uh, that's a very small group of committers. Uh, Openland's group. Can I ask, ask a question? Yeah. Or? Go for it. Okay. No. Go, 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 so, go. What do you tend to go. focus on go. while working on core? Uh, so I really like smaller things rather than like really big projects. I find that whenever I get involved in a really big project, it just like doesn't necessarily go anywhere. <laughs> so. Um, I like doing uh, like small UI features. Uh, recently, I um, I did the design for the O embeds. Uh, so now you can embed a WordPress post to another WordPress post, and so I did the interface for that. Um, pretty much whenever I get like pinged on something, which is like now I find that instead of seeking out projects, I tend to get like roped into projects. <laughs> so. Um, I, I, like, I really do like working on the smaller features uh, and also doing some of the community and meta stuff. What is a project that you're currently working on? Or about to work on or want to work on? So uh, I'm actually not working on a lot this cycle, mostly just doing a review of things. Um, but in th not three, seven, four, seven, coming up after this release, um, Helen's going to be leading it. Uh, it's going to be a big, uh, big focus on like themes and theme setup. Um, I personally would love to get involved in 2017. Um, that's, that's yeah, okay. <laughs> I've lost track of years. Uh, so I, I, mean, I would really love to work on that a little bit. Um, also just like set up stuff. Uh, it's a lot of what we're doing uh, on my team at work right now, so it's like pretty relevant. So I'm hoping that I can pitch in there. Your turn. <laughs> um, okay, so Really, just like one one more question: How do you recommend other designers contribute to Core? Um, it feels a little underrepresented um, as far as contributions go. Yeah. Uh, so I would say just start showing up. Uh, look at Make slash Design. Uh, so it's Make dot order slash Design. It's where like all the meeting notes go. Uh, we have a channel in Slack that's just like Design. Uh, so just like start. You know, reading along with things, going to going to the weekly chats, uh, looking at like the core chats, uh, volunteering. If anyone's like, oh, I need a designer. Uh, there's a, a so it, they're on our bug tracking system uh, track. Uh, we have a like a tag or something that's like UI focus or like needs UX review, and so just kind of look look around there. Great. Yeah. So okay, I think uh, that was all the questions we had. I'm not quite done with you, so don't go anywhere. Yeah, we have one last thing. So we have one commercial break coming up. Um, so don't go anywhere. We have Shiny updates. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, but before we do that, um, we noticed that you're quite a selfie expert. Yeah. Um, I think we have a slide for that. Uh, we had a slide for that. This one. So, <laughs> you saw that. Uh, do you have any tips for uh, a great selfie? Uh, yeah, so sunglasses and hats always improve uh, your selfies, I find. Uh, so you, you'll notice that I have a lot of sunglasses and hats. Um, but also, I, I take a lot of them, uh, and then I like move the camera around, and then I like choose from like the half dozen that I took before I finally post one. So you just don't let anyone know your process. Um, we're asking because it's almost time for our favorite part of the show, which is selfie time. time. <laughs> All right, let's do this. <laughs> Get your glasses, though. Oh, yeah. Let's nice. set glasses. Need my human selfie stick. <laughs> I only have one Twitter mention so far. <laughs> this is pretty, this is pretty <laughs> disappointing. We'll get, a, we'll get a lot more Twitter mentions after this selfie. Hold on. We're going to get all the crowd in here all too. All the crowd. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> yeah, just take like a dozen. Everybody wait. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to tweet that out real quick. <laughs> we don't have too much time here. We do have a lot of time. We have a fantastic dramatic reading to do. <laughs> um, do you still need me? No. <laughs> do you have your mug? Do you have your mug? Oh, sorry. Oh. You're gonna take this one. You can have it. Yeah, I'll just wash both. I'm gonna get really hoarse for the rest of this one. Okay, I'm just gonna use that one. <laughs> Everybody give a big round of applause for that. While we wait for Ovenland to do this little Twitter bit, he's going to tweet it out under the hashtag Canyon Ovenland in the morning, and all of you guys can pull out your phone and retweet it because it makes us look cooler. <laughs> I think I'm joking. Do it. Wait. Now. Okay, awesome. <laughs>
Get back over here. We've got some show to finish up. Uh, yes. Let me get the clicker. Um, you want to keep the. No. Okay. Uh, next. Get it all done in the morning. <laughs> and we're back. Our final segment today is, uh, is probably the most informative of all. Um, but to set the stage, I'd like to do a dramatic reading. Our story opens on a gray, desolate wasteland, otherwise known as the bleak screen of sadness, where theme and plug-in updates seldom survive. <laughs> the smell of user stress clings to the air like a suffocating smog. Many enter, few escape. But wait, what's that on the horizon? A shiny night arrives. <laughs> With his sword of PHP. Oh, sword, sword. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> and his shield of JavaScript. A new day has come. The sun shines bright. Our updates will survive to see the new world flourish. And see. <laughs> that was pretty painful. <laughs> yeah. We wanted to dress it up a little bit. <laughs> Open line. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about the new Shiny Updates feature in 4.6? Uh, sure. Yeah. So um, Shiny Updates is, is one of the probably most noticeable features in 4.6 uh, that is going to be released on August 16th uh, this year. Um, Updates traditionally have been something that users uh, are not very uh, fond of. Who's familiar with the current bleak screen of sadness, the gray screen? Yes. Okay. No. For everyone else, uh, we have a GIF prepared for you. So this is an example of uh, installing a plugin and a Jetpack in this case. And uh, in currently, this is what you see after you click the install. Button. It's um, it pulls you out of your context of you know installing a plugin. Um, things are going on. You don't understand what they are. You know you don't care what they are. Um, so that was a pretty bad experience. Yeah. Sometimes even like your server doesn't have the right credentials. You get like the FTP field. Oh, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. It's it's pretty bleak. <laughs> it is pretty bleak. Um, and so uh, one of the things that had been done so far was in WordPress 4.2. Um, they introduced. Um, shiny updates for plugin updates. So now, when you update a plugin, you, you have you know a banner uh, that you know informs you of the of the update. You click a link, and it just updates in line. It doesn't take you to that bleak screen of sadness. Uh, it just works, uh, and it updates the plugin for you. And um, uh, we also wanted to, or the, the, the you know the group that had worked on that um, wanted to expand that to installations um, and deletions of plugins and themes. And so, um, a feature plugin or a feature project rather uh, was started that would you know add that to WordPress. Um, and this was the mission statement or you know, kind of the, the purpose statement of, of this plugin. Um, pretty much just sort of summarizing that we that the group wanted to um, improve uh, installing, updating, and deleting uh, the experience uh, the experience of installing, updating, and deleting uh, plugins and themes. And um, yeah, so that has had been worked on for quite some time, two or three months. It didn't make it into 4.5. I think it was never released that it's slated to make it into 4.5, but um, yeah, it needed more. And so, yeah, you have a question? No, go on. I was going to see if anyone was familiar with the feature plugin way of updating core now, adding new features to core. <laughs> Just a quick iteration cycle that removes the dependency of uh, new features from the exact in court where uh, new features are started as a plugin and it worked in concurrence with like core so uh, you can have one feature that spans three or four or five or six updates yeah really like yeah. yeah really like pretty much yeah, so that one was a fairly short one it was just um, over like one and a half cycles I think um, yeah and some of the things that uh, were tackled in, in version two of shiny updates um, was and I have to look back to no, I'm uh, install bulk updates, exactly. So you can now uh, bulk update and bulk delete plugins, and it doesn't take you out of the context of the plugin screen. Um, you can install plugins, and it will automatically give you a, uh, um, an activate button after ins installation. It's really, really handy. And of course, uh, deleting a plugin is now also shiny. 
Uh, what we decided not to do was to um, make uh, activation and deactivation of China. So removing that page reload after activation, um, uh, we decided not to do that. Awesome. Oh, I thought you were asking me now. <laughs> you would be asking me now why. Uh, why did you decide not to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's so flawless. We should script this third part so that we can just read directly from it. Um, so the reason why is because there, there are plugins um, that will redirect you to a settings screen, for example, after activation. And so what would happen if we would have um, made that shiny would have been that you activate a plugin or a bunch of plugins, and then you, you know, want to write a new post, and you click on the post uh, link, and it takes you to the settings screen of the plugin, um, which is a really jarring and bizarre uh, experience. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of plugins out there that yep. can handle activation in any number of ways. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So we yeah didn't really have a good good way of dealing with that. And also, if you happen to activate a, a plugin that you know has a fatal error, um, you might lock yourself out of your site, and your site breaks. Um, that is pretty pretty bad experience. That's so <laughs> that'd be worse than the current bleak screen of settings. <laughs> <laughs> just a, just a tad. So we decided not to do that. And then on the, on the theme side, of course, uh, we had some catching up to do because it didn't have the shiny updates. And we added installations, updating, deleting uh, themes. Um, and both for plugins and themes, we did that on single site and multi site. Um, and then also, um, there, you, you have the ability to update plugins from the update, from, from the install plugin screen. Right? So we had to um, cover that case as well. And then also, <laughs> You can uh, preview details of a plugin, and it, it comes up with like a pop-up. From that pop-up, you can also install or update a plugin. So we had to cover that also. And then there's also <laughs> uh, the update core screen, which is just the update screen. Uh, and we tried to work on that. That didn't make it into 4.6. But that's another way of updating you know, plugins and, and themes. So well, I, I know that we have like a, a demo to show the shiny new shiny updates, yes. but, but was there any feedback from people right after the, the yeah. feature was launched? So, um, yeah, while it was still in, in, in feature plugin phase or in development, we had a few people looking at it. One of them was uh, Jeff Chandler, um, <laughs> who really, really liked it um, and, and thought it was magic, which it kind of is, you know, it is magical. Um, I have another quote from him. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> I think my, I, the third one is my favorite. Is your favorite? Yeah. 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 I don't know who he is, or, or that person is, I don't know if it's he or she. <laughs> but finally, it looks professional. Yeah. And I mean, that's what we're striving for. You know? yeah. 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 The years of unprofessional WordPress have, <laughs> have disappeared. Yeah. Uh, well, can you, can you show our audience a quick demo of the new updates? Sure, I can try. Let's see. Um, it's going to be a live demo, because that is always something that never goes wrong. <laughs> I think you have one minute. I have one? No, I have plenty of How much time do we have? Three minutes. You have plenty of time. This is working great. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's do this. Hey, there's Mel. Oh, yeah. Alright, so this is uh, your, your theme screen, of course. Uh, brand new in 4.6. You don't have to go into the details mode anymore to update a theme. You can just do it from the index mode up here. You hit update now. It just updates and it fails. <laughs> it usually gives you also a, a, a error warning. It's very professional looking. It's very professional. Oh man. So that worked great. Um, let's try it. So now it's updating, it's updating, and uh, eventually uh, it will, it will install it, and then we can also, it's not waiting for that. Well, it's doing everything right now. Like, it's oh, it's updated, like, okay. Installing. I think I just found a bug. You can also delete it, and we have shiny deletions, so now you hit that button, you hit enter because it says, are you sure? Yes, of course I'm sure. And it just disappears. Boom. Boom. That is, yeah. that's shiny. That's, that is shiny. Let's look at uh, installing a new plugin. No great time for this. Uh, LTE, this should be good. Reactions, my favorite plugin by uh, Gary Pendergast. Installing, so I have it in line in that button, handling all the uh, information there. 
once it's installed, it gives you a brief installed uh, message and then switches to activate. So you can activate from there. Um, if you've not seen it, you can do maybe two factor and install that. <clears throat> can you show me the details of the reactions plugin? <laughs> <laughs> no, what I can show you is so here's the more details link, right? And this is the pop up that I was talking about. And then um, once that is loaded, you have another install button down there. So there's plenty of ways for, um, uh, for you to install and update plugins. And then I just want to show you real quick deleting a plugin is super easy. Hit delete. Done. Done. So that's the brand new feature in 4.6 Shiny Updates. Boom. to the crowd. <laughs> okay, guys, that's our show for today. That was it? Yeah, so um, um, thank you for joining us. That's all we've got. Thank you.